Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, this video we're going to talk about 10, 10 legendaries that look great, but they suck. And with Plarium announcing that there's going to be a rebalance coming up, I thought, I thought, why not throw out 10 that I'd love to see rebalanced? I'd love to see them in the, the mix. Honestly, I actually don't have a lot of these, but just playing around with them uh, when I've been able to on other people's accounts or seeing them in action, most of them just seem absolutely dreadful so let's get into it then who's the first one on the list we've this is the one that we know is getting changed pixneal pixneal was a fusible champion uh, last christmas and this was the first ever fusion that i skipped first ever champion fusion that i skipped um because the kit just seemed so damn bad it was it was terrible um, so she's got what a veil a1 she's got increased defense and a heal a2 um, with a chance to get a weaken out and she's got a random freeze mechanic on her a3 honestly this is the worst part about a kit there's so many legendaries out there now that can just freeze a whole wave of enemies no problem at all um, and she goes out there and she's like well i might freeze one or two if i'm lucky uh, not good enough not good enough at all and then she's got a little bit of a mechanic on her passive as well. But I'm glad that Pixel is absolutely going to be in the list. It means that a lot of people that have been playing the game now for, what, eight months might actually get someone that comes out of the vault and helps them out. Sometimes they go super hard on these, on these, um, on these buffs. You know, we've had champions like Draco used to be a vault champion. Now he's a, a top tier legendary. Uh, Mashold was the same, absolute vault champion, top tier legendary. Uh, Tomb Lord was a vault champion, became a top tier legendary. Then they nerfed him again because they did it too strong. Uh, and now he's just kind of decent. But yeah, so it's possible they could go super hard and you go from having a vault lord to an absolute goddess. So Pixneal was first on my list. Uh, next one up looks sweet. One of the best looking champions in the game. I'm probably going to say that a lot in this video. But I really love the way he's got this kind of like Drust the Legend type feel to him. Um, with his big war, war axe. But yeah. Unfortunately, he doesn't live up to the hype. He actually came out the same time as Pixnil, I'm pretty sure. And both of them, we were like, what are they doing? They both look amazing. But damn, spent too much time on the artwork. Didn't think about skill set. So I'm hoping that your Cole, if you pull yourself a Void Legendary, you want him to be a beast. You, especially one that looks this cool. You know, you want him to be that kind of like Crisk. Yes, this is amazing. Your Cole doesn't deliver. Um, he hits an average kind of level of damage. He's got some weird kind of mechanics going on with his freezes and a kind of chances to get an extra turn. Triple hit against one enemy. There's like no decent AoE stuff going on really for damage. and um, yeah, just absolutely needs a buff. Can't stay alive long enough to keep get stuff away. He hits for a mediocre amount. It's like you just need to give him a purpose in the game and then set his skill set to absolutely deliver against it. The trouble we've got is normally when they do buffs or nerfs, they tweak percentages, yeah? So it might be, um, okay, so at the moment it's 20% chance to freeze. If we make it 30%, that'll be fine. No, this is not one of those guys. He needs a rework. He needs a rework of his kits. He needs to be, um, you know, someone who's thumping big AOE hits and um, perhaps does more damage if there's freezes out there rather than being the person that does freezes. As soon as you start to give your damage dealers debuffs, it makes their builds much harder because you've got to get accuracy into their kits. So we absolutely want um, for him to be someone who ramps damage up based on other debuffs in the game, not... Someone who's got to kind of be this support stroke attack champion. What am I? So your Cole's on my list. Um, next one up is someone that I got. And I was so excited when I pulled this dude. Look at these weapons. Freaking like amazing. Like he looks badass. Yeah. I'd I'm telling you now. If he's in a fight with Foley. How's he losing that fight? Yeah. If he's fighting Trunda, I'd give him a shot. I'd give him a shot against Trunda with these weapons and this kind of like war-torn, I can take it, I've taken it, I've been there, I've done it, sort of look. Unfortunately, his passive never has a place in the game right now, apart from maybe Clan Boss, but he's not a Clan Boss champion at all. So 
The passive makes no sense for raid shadow legends, albeit it's kind of a fun idea. It just makes no sense. There's nowhere in the game that allows you to ramp it up. Um, he brings no kind of utility, no debuffs. He's got a couple of big hitters, but they're not big enough, quite frankly. So he's someone that kind of just needs a damage buff or you need to give him some utility that makes some sense. The passive just didn't, just actually needs to be reworked. You know, you've got Ninja's got a cool passive. And it's along the same sort of lines. But then Ninja's got a kit that um, can play in Clan Boss. This guy's got a passive that would only work on Clan Boss. But none of his kit works in Clan Boss. He's an arena champion, basically. So King Garog absolutely needs a rework. Um, got someone else in here as well. Don't have a... Um, this one is someone who doesn't look great. I think it's one of the least, like, cool legendaries in the game for me. But that's just personal opinion. Teela Gourmet. She's had a buff already, believe it or not. Steals a random buff A1. Um, single target HP burn here. Attacks all enemies. Leech here. It's all a bit epic. It's all a bit epic at best. At best. Maybe this needs to be an AoE HP burn. Um, at that point, she becomes pretty value, you know, valuable because that's a really valuable skill. Um, but yeah, she's had one buff. She needs a fresh one. She definitely needs a fresh look. Maybe some sort of uh, cool debuff on her A1 as well, like a decrease attack or a um, drop defense type of debuff on her A1. Uh, and maybe like a funky passive into a kit that gives her, you know, something like a a speed up mechanic or... Um, a damage up mechanic, something else. She just, literally, she's so dull. Her, her, her whole kind of setup is dull and it doesn't do a lot. So Teela in the mix. Um, next one is actually another, it was either, I think it was a fragment, this one, rather than a fusion. Elegaeus loves a lick. Loves to lick with his big tongue. Oh, yes, please. Um, kind of cool looking champion, I guess. Like, there's no problem with that. But... There's nowhere in the game that makes him valuable. Like, at a push, at an absolute push, you could say... They tried to be... Um, I, I guess they tried to be original with his A2, but the originality just made him way worse than other champions in the game already. So put someone's skill on cooldown. If anyone else is a duplicate, put that champion on cooldown as well. Basically, the only place this works is if you're in a wave of like Valks or Cethalios or something in Faction Wars and you put their skills on cooldown. Maybe you use him against um, Iridoth the, the Dragon. Maybe. But honestly, he doesn't bring enough else. He just doesn't bring enough for that to be valuable. You know, you've got epics that are doing this better against the whole enemy wave better. So this is not good enough. It needs to just be, puts all target skills on cooldown. Like, forget the funky with being original. It's not good enough. It doesn't work in the game. There's nowhere in the game that it makes sense at. So, um, and, and if that was, then all enemy skills go on cooldown, like a Warlord style skill, then, damn, you've got yourself a top tier legendary straight away. That's the difference. So, that still either needs to be massively enhanced or something else in this kit needs to be completely changed. So, at the minute, he's basically unplayable. Um, okay, next one in the list. One of the OGs. I'm never happy for someone if I pull them a Queen Eva. I'm never happy. You know why? Because all she can really do is a campaign farmer. And if I want a campaign farmer, I'm also going to get Saurus, who's an uncommon, or the starter champions, or a whole bunch of million others that could do the same job. Yeah? That's not good enough. If your legendary's best purpose is a campaign farmer, that's not good enough. Sorry, it's not. The game's evolved since then. Yeah, maybe day one when the game came out and it was like, yeah, campaign farmer, awesome. That's really cool. Um, but now she's nowhere near strong enough. She's too squishy. She doesn't hit hard enough on her AoEs. Um, and that's kind of it. Like, she, if she hit hard on her AoEs, then maybe she's a cool champ. Um, but she just doesn't hit hard enough. Like, it's just straight up doesn't hit hard enough to, to be relevant in Arena um, or relevant anywhere else. She doesn't bring any good debuffs for anywhere else. The only debuff she's got is a finite debuff, which um, is no point because she's all single target stuff, like all, all single hits. So, apart from Ray 2, I guess. But yeah, she's just, she's got no value in the game. 
So she needs an absolute rework for me um, or a massive damage spike. So next one up is going to be, actually, I think it was, no, next faction. Next one up was going to be Nama. This is an interesting one. A lot of people are super psyched when they get Nama. And again, she looks cool. She's got this kind of like flowing, almost like ribbon-like thing going around her. She's doing dancing. Um, awesome. Great dancing. But where do you play Nama? And if you're an early game player, maybe she's got some value for you. But honestly, her kit is all clan boss. But it's kind of weird. It doesn't quite work. So you've got a decrease attack A2, which is okay, but it's not really good enough to be uh, a consistent decrease attack champion because if it drops off at any point, if you just land a, a resist, then it's gone. Decrease attack is gone, you, you run's over. So it's an iffy decrease attack champion. You've got an A1, which has got a chance to enhance the duration of random debuffs which is a good steal, but compared to other champions in her kind of um, class, yeah, they'll be increasing all of the duration of debuffs, not just three. That's an epic skill. Legendaries in increase all of the debuffs. So then this isn't quite good enough. And then the A3 is pretty solid if the A2, A1 and A2 were better. So if they just made this all debuffs, I think we've got a champion. But as it is... You've got kind of Frozen Banshee does this better. You've got a ton of champions does this better just because it's it's consistent and this isn't quite consistent enough. And then this isn't good enough either by itself. So all of her skills one by one aren't good enough. But if you just enhance the A1, I think she'd be a top tier champion for, for clan boss like Vizier is. Um, okay, we've got a couple more to do. So we're going to pick out by Stoffers here as well. Just... Look, what is he? He's the highest attack champion in the game. He's got two massive AoEs, but they're not massive AoEs. They're like just slightly worse than a starter rare champion worth of damage. He's got a very low defense, worse than a starter rare champion. Yeah. So everything about him says, I'm going to smack. But then he does this kind of like mediocre tickle, which is it's an okay hit. But it's not worth all of the books, the effort to get him going. So for me, he just straight up needs a damage buff. His kit's fine. His kit's actually kind of fun, kind of cool. Um, he should be up there with at least the ethos level of damage type of nuka. Um, because it's all he does. He doesn't bring anything else. Like when you've got other champions that um, can place, like Candrophon, does a good level of damage. But you can also take him into somewhere like Doom Tower. And he'll stay alive for a bunch of time. By Stoffus won't. So he has to finish people off with the first smack. Right now he doesn't do it. So by Stoffus just absolutely needs a damage buff. Or a mechanic to stay alive like Kandrafon got. Um, okay, two more to go. So this one, another one. It was a cool idea. Uh, when I first brought out a video on him, I was like, this guy is useless. Um, in fairness, my video was useless as well. But... I've not seen anyone use him to any good degree yet. So uh, I stand by my conclusion, even if it was one of my worst champion guides I'd ever done. Uh, Samar Gemcursed. I mean, it's a cool idea of a, of a champion. He's got uh, damage based off HP. So we know that you can't buff HP damage once he's out on the field, which means that you kind of need to give them good multipliers in the first place. You can't give anyone an increase... Um, health buff like you can increase attack or increase defense so you've got to give him a, a fair crack of the whip with the multipliers in the first place and they don't do it um he's got a kind of fun mechanic on his passive so i like it i actually kind of like his kit his kit's interesting he just doesn't hit nearly hard enough for a legendary champion which means he's just not viable he's just not viable he needs too many stats and then once you've given him all those stats he's just plain average so pump his damage and then we've got ourselves a champion. Samar Gemcursed. Okay, one more then. One of the newer champs in the game. Um, I'm already calling it. He needs a buff. Noble. I mean, fair enough on the dress sense. Like, good fashion sense he's got here. I love the baggy knees. Maybe it's a little bit 90s, but I love the baggy knees. Um, been watching a bit of MC Hammer, I'm sure. Yeah. What's going on with this guy? Where do you play with Noble? 
Just a weird old kit. Ignore some defense. Builds champion's turn meter after the attack. If the target's under fear or true fear, decreases the cooldown of dismay. Okay, what's this then? AoE, chance to um, decrease enemy turn meter. If there are people under fear or true fear, we'll also um, fill this champion's turn meter by the amount those enemies lose. Like, it's all based, this whole kit is based on fear and, and true fear, which is not a reliable enough debuff in the game like it's a 50 50 no one wants an rng 50 50 race it always goes in your favor when you when you don't want it to and not in your favor when you want it to um yeah i just feel like noble they try to do something really fun with him and i like the i like the idea of them doing that but he doesn't really have a place to play with this funky old mechanic i guess he's meant to be an arena champion i've never seen him in a single arena fight since i since he's come out I've never seen him in a single team. Um, so Noble even needs a rework. Yeah, I feel like he just needs a rework. Like give him some debuffs other than this kind of funky mechanic and give him a purpose. I, I much prefer champions to have a purpose in the game. Like where should they play? Where should you use that champion? That's what I want to see. So there you go, guys. 10 legendaries. I hope they're considering for the upcoming changes. Uh, let me know if I've missed any from your kind of like vault. You know, who's in your vault that you absolutely should throw on there. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.